Diogo Jota is the fourth man in the Liverpool attack who is slowly becoming the third man now. Since the Reds signed him in 2020, he's been phenomenal and instrumental to the team. Anyway, we're not here to talk about how important the Portuguese man is for his club. In this video, we'll be looking at 10 things you probably didn't know about Diogo Jota. Let's get right to it. Number 1. His name is not Jota. We're just going to have to dive right in and tell you that Diogo Jota's real name is actually not even Jota. His full name is Diogo José Teixeira da Silva. Jota was just a nickname from childhood that stuck and now everybody thinks that's his last name. Number 2. He can't wear Jota on his back in the Premier League. Pause. Be honest, you thought that Jota was the name on the back of Diogo's shirt at Liverpool, didn't you? Well, it's not. The Liverpool man has never worn Jota on the back of his shirt in the Premier League. What's written behind his jersey is Diogo J. And this was not just a function of choice, he just cannot have Jota printed on his shirt in the Premier League. It's a rule in England that you cannot have a nickname printed on your jersey in the English top flight. Yeah, but Chicharito and Kun Aguero had their nicknames on the back of their jerseys. Well, those cases were because those players had their nicknames behind their jerseys for most of their careers before they moved to England. The Premier League does make a concession for cases like that. Number 3. He is from a footballing family. Jota's parents are huge football lovers and because of that, they were able to support their son's dreams of playing football from very early ages. Both Diogo and his brother Andre Silva are now footballers and they started playing the sport at around 9 years old. It's not the Leipzig striker, you know, it's a different Andre. We just thought we should make that clear for you. Number 4. His idol is now his rival. Growing up as a young aspiring footballer in the early 2000s in Portugal, can you guess who Diogo Jota's idol was? Of course, it was Cristiano Ronaldo. Jota was not even 10 years old yet when CR7 became a superstar. And before Jota even became a teenager, Cristiano had already won a Champions League and a Ballon d'Or. So, it's no surprise that Diogo grew up idolizing the five-time Ballon d'Or winner. Jota himself said, Cristiano Ronaldo was my hero. At that time he was 19, but he was already playing in the Euros with so much quality. During my childhood, he was a Man United and Real Madrid. As Portuguese guys, we always looked upon him as our main reference. Fast forward to many years later, and Jota now has his idol as a rival. While he's on the same side with CR7 during international outings, they are sworn enemies with their club sides. And in their last meeting, Jota joined in humiliating his idol, scoring one of the goals in Liverpool's 5-0 win against Manchester United in the Premier League. Number 5. He was a Madrid player. Did you know that Diogo Jota was once signed and unveiled in Madrid? The Portuguese made the move from Pacos de Ferreira to Atletico Madrid in March 2016. He was given a five-year contract because of how talented he was. But he never played a single game with Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone just didn't fancy the young player that he didn't even give him a debut, not even seconds on the pitch. Number 6. He suffered a heart problem. In 2014, Diogo Jota found out that he had a heart problem. During the screening, it was discovered that he had a problem with his heart and that problem sidelined him for about a month. He couldn't play or even train. According to him, it was a really difficult moment and the wait felt like an eternity. Jota said, it had this sort of impact that made me think, will I be able to continue playing? That's how bad it was. He confessed that he knew that there was a possibility he could quit football that early because of the problem, but he still kept a positive mindset regardless. But anyway, after his electrocardiogram was submitted for electrophysiological study, he was then cleared to go back playing. His debut was delayed, but thankfully it wasn't cancelled absolutely. Number 7. He loves video games. Diogo doesn't just love video games, he's a genius at them. He won the E Premier League FIFA 20 tournament to prove that he doesn't just win on the pitch, he wins even when it's a simulation. He beat his teammate Trent Alexander-Arnold in the final to win the video game tournament. Jota has said that he believes that video games help him become a better footballer. According to him, it gives him a better understanding of the game and he sees more clearly what changes he can make when he goes on the pitch. After winning all 30 of his Ultimate Team Weekend League matches, the Portuguese forward was ranked number one on FUT Champions Game Mode. That's number one in the world! Pretty big achievement for a professional footballer, don't you think? To dominate in game mode and still dominate in real life. Must be nice being Diogo Jota. Number 8. Can you guess how Jota prepares for games? 
Diogo Jota has confessed to engaging in a FIFA 22 video game tournament on the morning of a Premier League game, the one against Southampton in November. He even had to leave the FIFA tournament early because of the Premier League match. And you might argue that that is not the best way to get ready for a football match, but well, it seems to work just fine for Jota. Because if you remember, in that game, Jota scored twice, including one very early one, and he didn't even play the whole game. Maybe he was in a hurry to go complete his FIFA tournament. Number 9. His best friend is Ruben Neves. Diogo Jota is best friends with his current teammate and former teammate Ruben Neves. Yes, Neves is both his current teammate and former teammate. They still play together for the Portuguese national team and they used to play together also at Wolves and Porto. And no, these two were not just best buddies on the pitch because they trained together, they were actually best friends even off the pitch. On social media, you can see photos of them enjoying each other's company at different locations. And they have experienced a great deal together. They really do share a connection, those two. Number 10. If he wasn't a footballer. If Jota wasn't a footballer, he probably would have been a cricket player. He sure loves cricket. Look at him and his best friend Neves enjoying a recreational game of cricket in Wolverhampton. However, we doubt that he would have been as good at cricket as he is at football should he have taken that route. He himself confessed that, unlike football, cricket was not a game he loved from childhood. He discovered it when he was already playing professional football, but really got interested in the sport and decided to learn more about it. He and his buddy even have a special spot, Aromas de Portugal, in Wolverhampton, where they would go and eat and chill and talk about the game of cricket. But well, if Jota was not a football player, he would most likely have been a professional gamer. At least we know for sure that he's very good at that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our really captivating videos. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.